Margaret fears she may be pregnant. Today at 5 on MASH. Now, live from the studios of 1290 WHIO, your chance to take part in the Miami Valley's only midday radio talk forum. 1290 WHIO and Television 7 proudly present this simulcast segment of the Mike Sinto Show. Dolores, uh, did it bother you, would it bother you if I referred to you as a whore? No, that'd be fine. Why? Why, why wouldn't that offend you? Because I think that... Uh, Women who who view prostitutes, call girls, working girls, such as yourself, use that term, use the term whore in a derogatory way. Does that, that doesn't bother you? Well, no. I, I, do you mean to be derogatory? Is that your intention? No, no, no. I'm, well, I'm asking you if, it, yeah, <laughs> if, if the intent. But I, th I think intentions matter, you know. Uh -huh. Don't you? Oh, sure, sure. Can you tell someone's intention? I mean, it doesn't offend you if someone referred to you if you were in the third party listening and someone referred to you as a whore? Well, I don't know, but uh, Mike, I'd have to see the situation. Okay. Um, because there's so many things in this world to be concerned about, and whether one is being called a whore or not seems way down on the list. I mean, when you consider that the atmosphere is being destroyed, and I, you know, I've got, there are a lot of things that bother me, and that's just way down on the list. Okay. Um, is there anything that you won't do with a man for money? Well, there's certainly, there's uh, a lot of things that I won't do. For one thing, I won't do the Morton Downey Jr. show. Okay. Uh, but why? Why? Mm -hmm. Because I, I just think that there's no point to it. I've watched a couple of times they asked me to do it, and uh, that was at the point that I watched it, and I couldn't see that there was any uh, point to be made. It seemed that there was um, a lot of abusive language mm -hmm. and uh, no point. Hey, you... Uh but but I won't yeah. do other things too. Like I won't do anything that will hurt an animal. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do anything that would um, that would frighten or uh, involve a child, mm -hmm. or that would frighten or or involve anybody that didn't want to be part of the situation. Dolores, do you, you know have? Yeah, I understand. Do you have or would you have sex with a woman? Oh, I have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are, does that make you bisexual, or since you're doing it for a living, you're not? Well, I don't know if it makes me bisexual. I guess it's. I guess it does. What do you think? I don't know. Uh, I. Uh, I guess in the strictest sense of it, if you. Uh, yeah. If you have sex with someone of the same sex and and are also heterosexual, I guess that makes you bisexual. I guess so. Are you scared of disease? Of course. What and do you What I, do you do to protect yourself? I use uh, prophylactics and I use lubricants with non-oxanol nine and prophylactics that have a non-oxanol nine lubrication on them as mm -hmm. well. And then, of course, I. Yeah. Uh, try to just stay away from people who have other outward appearances of being of being uh, diseased. We mentioned I, one of the people I wrote about in the book was somebody that had herpes mm -hmm. that uh, I had some problems with. Okay, well, the name of the book, by the way, for those who are joining us on the television segment, uh, Working My Life as a Prostitute, the author of the book is Dolores French. Uh, she's joining us from our studios, WSB in Atlanta. We're going to show you right now how you can participate, how you can ask some of the same questions we've been into just by dialing, uh, dialing a couple of simple phone numbers and talking to a lady who makes her living as a prostitute. You can take part in the Mike Sinto Show by calling 457-1290 or toll-free anywhere in Ohio, 1-800-345-1290. Hi, Kathy. You're on with <coughs> prostitute Dolores French. Yes. Yes. You speak up real loud. First. Okay. Thanks. Um, what I had to say, it really wasn't a question. It's, I just can't understand today... With the people uh, having so much disease in our society, how one person or even several thousand women out there that do this as a profession and can be spreading these diseases around, whether they wear a prophylactic or not. Are you spreading diseases around? Yes. Uh, Dolores? Are well, we, we're certainly making every effort that we can not to, just like people that are dealing with medical uh, the medical profession do what they can to make sure that diseases aren't being spread. This so I understand your concern. Yeah. Well, but one of the things I, I I feel pretty good about is that while people are continuing to use the services of prostitutes, it's good that there are people that are informed about diseases and are doing what they can to keep from using. 
Right. Thank you, Kathy. Thank uh, you for uh, uh, we, we were going to say happened? hello to Kenny, and Kenny's gone. Uh -huh. Let's try. Uh, let's try Priscilla from okay. West Dayton. You're on with Dolores French. Um. Yes. Hi, Dolores. Hi. How are you, Priscilla? Fine. Okay. I was wondering. Um. Are you? Have you thought about having kids? And if so, have you thought about telling them? You know what you did or what you continue to do? Do you mm -hmm. think this is going to be a thing that you're going to continue to do for the rest of your life? Or okay, something? before we answer the question about having kids, and thank you, Priscilla, uh, we should mention to the television audience, and we didn't, we mentioned in the radio, uh, to the radio audience, you are married, Dolores. Yes, I am married. Uh, to an attorney, mm -hmm. and uh, what you do is just fine with him. Uh, yeah, we don't have any children. We've considered possibly adopting children, but at this point, I, well, one of the things I say in the book is if you can't find time for an abortion, you don't have time for a child, and at this point in our life, if we don't have time to fill out adoption papers, we don't have time for a child, so that, I don't know if it's ever going to come to pass, mm -hmm. but certainly one of the things I've observed over the past several years working with other women who do have children is that they do have a much better relationship with their children when they are honest with them about what they do for a living and make them understand how and why they do what they do uh, and understand the prejudices and uh, what the circumstances so are. So if you had a, if you had a daughter or a son you would you would tell them that you oh, are a absolutely. prostitute? absolutely. Absolutely. Because what I've seen in, in families where they don't tell them is that the kids usually know anyway and if they don't know they find out eventually mm -hmm. and then they feel betrayed. We've talked about it, and thank you, Priscilla, for calling. Uh, Dolores, we've talked about uh, a lot uh, in the, the first 40 minutes of this broadcast, including the radio segment. Before we go back to the phones, uh, you're on for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, because uh, I found your book fascinating, and I've had you on before, and you're a fascinating guest and very articulate about what you do. Um, number two, because obviously on your end, uh, you would like to sell copies of the book. Uh, but number three, is there a message? Is there something out of all the things that we've talked about today? Is there something you want to say to either girls who are working in the streets or the wives whose husbands are maybe using services of people uh, in your profession or uh, just people in general? Is there, is there some message that you really like to get to people? Well, those are some uh, broad areas that you've just covered, and certainly there are a number of messages that I would like to get to people. And one of the main things that I wanted to come out of the book was to give people in general a better understanding of prostitution, a better understanding of how it really works as opposed to the way they've seen it portrayed in television and in movies. That is, they've generally seen either the very high-class call girls who live in penthouses and drive Rolls Royces, or they've seen down-and-out street walkers, and those uh, certainly make up the minority of people in the business. Most women in prostitution are very middle class to upper middle class uh, and live in a very middle class lifestyle that are supporting children, living in the suburbs, going to, going to college, maybe starting a business or have another business on the side or have other jobs. Maybe they're school teachers or uh, secretaries or something of that sort. And prostitution is something that they do to supplement that income and they otherwise lead very ordinary lives. That was one of the things I wanted to get across um, was for people to understand how that works. And as far as women that are in the business, uh, there is a community of prostitutes that work with the National Task Force in Prostitution and uh, Coyote and Hire, which is a um, uh, sort of a union of mm -hmm prostitutes so that they ha do have a community. But there are a lot of prostitutes out there, Mike, that are working independently and don't realize the community that they have and don't have an identity uh, or can't, don't have a group to identify with. And one of the things I hope to come out of this book is for those women who read it to uh, have a little bit uh, better sense of themselves and their work and a little bit uh, better sense of the history of what they're doing. Because pr as you mentioned earlier, prostitution has been around a long time and it has quite an... Second only to carpentry, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's always debatable. When you go back millions of years, you know, it's debatable. Yeah. How, much, uh, uh, how much would a half hour cost with you? Well, for for straight know, for straight sex. <laughs> no, no, for straight sex. I don't know. I mean, if okay, let's hypothetically, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know how. Yeah, hypothetically. Well, let's just say, <clears throat> let me just say that uh, sessions range from around two hundred to five hundred uh, for a forty-minute hour. A forty-minute hour. Okay. That includes twenty minutes of break time, or what? <laughs> or is that warm well, up? I don't know. You know, psychiatrists have a fifty-minute hour, yeah. but they don't have to get undressed and dressed, right? Okay. You know, All right. so it's a similar sort of situation. More with uh, Dolores French and your comments. Dolores joining us uh, from our studios at our sister station in Atlanta, WSB, and thanks to Tony Robinson, who's doing a fine job of directing on that end. 
And we'll be back with more as the Mike Sento Show continues on 1290 WHIO Radio and Television 7. From the studios of WSB uh, in Atlanta, we're talking to Dolores French, uh, the author of uh, Working My Life as a Prostitute, uh, which, Dolores, you told us is available uh, in the bookstores right now. And I I have a habit of not reading books uh, prior to having the guests on, but since I'd already had you on and you were kind enough to send me a copy of it, I did get a chance to read it. Uh, It is a fascinating book, and uh, I recommend it highly, whether people... Like what you do or not, uh, it makes for very interesting reading. Uh, it, it's explicit. I mean, you tell what happens. You tell what it's about. Yeah. Right. Well, well, tell me, Mike, what part did you like? Um, I like, you know, it was interesting. I'll tell you, the, the part that sticks out of my mind is the part where you you thought that uh, the John, is that, I guess that's what they're called, the John was a setup, was a plant mm-hmm. uh, in, the, in the hotel room. And uh, the, the, the way that you learn the kinds of things you're allowed to say and not allowed to say, and how you had to, had to almost work your way out of the room. Did, yeah. you ever find out if, did you ever find out if that particular person was indeed a, an well, undercover no, man? Uh, you don't, no, you don't find out generally unless you get arrested, but it's always better to, uh, to leave a situation if you're not sure yeah. about it, because if he wasn't a cop, he certainly was a strange guy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's say hello to, uh, to Chris from Bell Fountain, Ohio. Hi, what do you think about all this, Chris? Oh, well, I guess <laughs> you have to do what you have to do. Um, Maybe she wants to do it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, whatever, you know, whatever suits her. Um, I was wondering if um, a marriage has ever broken up over this and how that makes you feel. Have well, you ever broken up a marriage? I don't think, I don't think a marriage has ever... It, do we have some background there? Wait, no, yeah, yeah her baby was crying in the background, oh, so now okay. we... Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Is it me? Yeah, you're on, yeah, you're on Dolores. Go turn? ahead. It's your turn. Okay. <laughs> you're live. Okay. Uh, no, as far as I know, uh, I don't know of a marriage that's broken up over it. And, in fact, I think that this sort of thing helps a lot of people's marriages because, um, for, for example, I'm on the road a lot. And my husband is left alone, and I would certainly much prefer that he have a relationship with someone that he's paying, that's getting paid as opposed to getting involved with somebody in an, in an affair or something of that sort. Can you understand us, and thanks for your call, Chris, can you understand us wondering uh, about why your husband would readily accept this? I mean, I, I know he does, and I understand yeah. that, but can you understand us wondering about that? Well, I guess I can under- understand it, because I know, s- because uh, as we talked about earlier, he's an attorney, and I tell you, some of the cases that he takes and some of the things he does, I have to take a deep breath once in a while, you know, <laughs> because, because it's, uh, you know, I think, Mike, no matter what profession that, that you're in, your spouse has some uh, feelings about it that are not necessarily always positive. So, yeah, I understand what you're saying, <clears throat> but he knew what I did before we got involved. Uh, we were friends for several years before we even started dating, which I think is a nice way to get into a relationship with somebody so that it's, you know, it doesn't start out with all passion. And, and I can uh, just see, though, the candlelit dinner you know, and the, the mm-hmm. romantic setting, and you get beeped by a client. Yeah, uh, sorry, well, sorry, honey, I have to go yeah. take care of business. Well, it happens with him as often as it does with me, too. You know, we both have beepers. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go back to the phones and we say hello to Marjorie. Hi, what do you think about all this, Marjorie? Well, I'll tell you. I am 68 years old, and my terminology for the same thing was what I taught, and that is a slop jar, anybody. You think that, that what, a she's a slop jar? Hit. Huh? What'd you say? She's a slop jar? Yeah. Hey, you went out of that crud up, you. All right. Pardon? She. Uh, well, I think she was being a little more graphic. Than, uh, have you ever heard that term? I've never heard that term for what you do, slop jar. Well, I've heard quite a few terms, yeah. and I think I've heard... Th- I understand what she's saying. I, I don't find it yeah. to be the case, because women that are in this business do tend to be selective. And you do make a lot of money. I mean, if you're making two to $500 for an hour's worth of work, you can afford to say, well, not this time, mm-hmm. uh, pretty often, and still make a good living. So, Mike, hello. You're on with Dolores French on the Mike Sento Show. Mike, are you there? All right. Let's, let's try Jerry. Hello. Jerry, are you there? All right, let's try Chris. Hi. Hello. Yeah, Chris, I'm glad there's somebody out there. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to ask um, her, how does she fill out her tax, re- 
you know, tax return, what did you put down for a job? Yeah, do you claim all this? You can't claim this, can you? Oh, I have to claim it. Um, as what? Uh, well, I claim it as an entertainer. I have an accountant that takes care of all of this. Mm -hmm. And we went over what my expenses are, what my deductions are, and he's determined that they were about the same as an entertainer's deductions, and so that's how I do it. Do you get a big so, tax yes, return? Pardon? Do you get a big tax return? Uh, n no, I generally don't get a big re tax return because he takes care of it on a quarterly basis. Chris, have you ever gone to a prostitute before? Uh, I just got back from Japan, and they have um, prostitutes over there, but no. Why not? I, well, I not. Did you go? Did you go to any of the places where they have them in Japan? Oh yes, I, I've. There's a place called Whisper Alley in Okinawa, Japan, and it's just full of them. Mm-hmm. And no, okay. they they usually mug you. They All right. do. They they mug you. Yeah. Okay. In Japan. Yes. All oh, right. Well. Chris, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, Dolores. Uh, where would one go to school to learn how to do what you do? <laughs> well, Europe uh, would be a good place to go to learn. Mm -hmm. But as you, I guess, read in my book, I learn from other women, and I think that in the United States, that's the best way to learn. Do you, have any, uh, do you have any followers who are learning from you now? Well, probably there are people who are reading this book and learning some things. I know one of the reasons that I wrote the book, too, was that I, it's the book I wish I had had to read before I got into the business because it does answer a lot of questions. One of the things we covered in the radio segment that we did not answer, ask you here, uh, and just for the benefit of those joining us uh, in television, uh, do you sleep with priests and ministers and... Well, I haven't had any priests that I know of, but I do see ministers pretty regularly uh, here in the South. There's a lot of ministers and uh, rabbis. I see a lot of rabbis. And I, they're among my favorites. You they're, said Baptists were among your favorites, too, right? Yeah. yeah. Hasidic, Hasidic rabbis and Baptists are oh, yeah. good. I enjoy them. Haven't met anybody named Jimmy, have you, lately? Uh, no. no, no. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna we're we're gonna take a break. And even if I had Mike, I wouldn't say. So. Okay, yeah, you don't kiss and tell, or anything no. else and tell. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna take a break. Dolores French is with us from the studios at WSB in Atlanta. Prostitution. Want to find out how you feel about it? The name of the book again is uh, Working My Life as a Prostitute. The Mike Sento Show continues on 1290 WHIO Radio and Television. We want to thank a couple of people on the other end uh, as well. We thank Tony Robinson before. I believe it's uh, Tim Gossett running audio uh, in Atlanta at WSB, as well as uh, Cindy Crabtree doing some fine camera work down there. We want to thank them for that. Our guest is Dolores French, uh, prostitute and author of the book, Working My Life as a Prostitute. And is who's uh, who publishes that, uh, Dolores? E.P. Dutton. E.P. Dutton. E.P. Dutton, and it's also in the, uh, you can get it through that Doubleday thing too, right? Yeah, you can get it through the book club and magazines now, which All is right. great. I love it. Where's the best place to read the book? Never mind, I'm not going to ask that. <laughs> uh, let's say hello to, I believe Marsha's up next from Sydney. Hi. Hi, Dolores. Hi, Marsha. Um, I think what you're doing is great. I wanted to tell you that. Um, what I was wanting to know is how long have you been in this? I've been in it about 11 years now, and I don't know how much longer I'm going to be doing it. Um, do you enjoy what you do? Absolutely. I think that's great. Well, yeah. You know, I, one of the things I love about it is every time I do a job, uh, I feel like, this isn't this wonderful? I mean, it's just... Um, well, it's a great job to do. You know, I, and I asked you in the radio portion, too, and Marcia, you may be interested in this, too. Uh, the old rumor is that, that for folks out here who uh, are not in the business is that women who are in this profession either are in it because they didn't like sex and didn't like men to begin with or they don't like it after they've been doing it for a while. Is that the case? Well, I don't find it to be the case. It's certainly not. I, I really do like men. I enjoy men uh, quite a bit. And I certainly like sex. And m m for myself and many of the women that I know, one of the reasons that we did find uh, and do find this a good profession to be in is because we do enjoy sex and we do enjoy men. It gives us an opportunity to uh, see quite a bit of that, both uh, men and sex. Hello, Les. You had a brief question for Dolores French. Um, are you checking for the venereal diseases, gonorrhea, syphilis, and of mm -hmm. course... Not at this moment, she probably isn't. But <laughs> but <laughs> no, but I understand what you mean. But yeah, we do check and I do check, but there's so little that you can actually see by looking and the best thing to do is to always use protection 
use non-oxidol 9, use your prophylactics, and I mean use them all the time. Use them when you're involved in oral sex as well. All right, Les, thank you very much. You know, there are, Dolores, uh, people who are going to say that uh, I'm having you on because uh, this is a sensational topic, uh, and I'm, I don't mean that necessarily in a, a positive way, uh, sensationalizing on something that I shouldn't be. Uh, you know, do you see what you do as uh, something out of the ordinary, or is this just an everyday 9 to 5, well, not 9 to 5 job, but an everyday job for you, career? Well, I guess it is an everyday job for me in a way. Uh, on the other hand, I understand what how people feel about it. It is something that people don't understand, and I personally think that you're doing a nice service for people to expose them a little bit more to something that uh, they, they get a um, distorted view of on a regular basis and don't ever get to meet somebody or see anybody who really does it and uh, don't have the opportunity to read material that gives them a really clear or, or accurate picture of what the business is about. So I understand, yeah, it's, it is rating yeah. season, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is, as a matter of fact. Listen, I've got about 30 seconds, a real okay. quick answer from you. Our subject Sorry. tomorrow in this segment, Dolores, is pornography leads to uh, rape and violence. You know mm -hmm. the Ted Bundy case. Uh, very yes. quick, do you agree with that? We have about 15 seconds for your no, answer. I, no, I don't, and I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to say something about it. I think that Ted Bundy's been a very manipulative person throughout his life, and that one of the reasons he made that statement is so that after his death, people would continue right. to debate the issue using his name as okay. uh, part of that debate. I've got to run. Thanks so much. Okay. Uh, very articulate lady. Thank you. From WSB in Atlanta, Dolores French. Name of the book, Working My Life as a Prostitute. As we mentioned tomorrow, a debate on pornography. Does it cause people to commit heinous crimes? Do you buy that or do you think that's just so much garbage? If you do buy it, who's going to do the censoring? Go out there and make it a great day. If you can stay with us, we're going to continue our discussion on prostitution. This simulcast segment of the Mike Sinto Show was a presentation of 1290 WHIO Radio and Television 7. Join us tomorrow morning for another exciting guest and conversation. The Mike Sinto Show can be heard weekdays from 9 till 1 on AM 1290 WHIO.